As I said, uh, we're lucky enough to be talking to Nicola Whitehall on the telephone, and it's nothing to do with that track, Nicola. Uh, are you there? Hello. Hello, John. You are there. Excellent. Lovely to be here. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me along to the Silver Fox's speciality uh, <laughs> of the show. There's not much of the fox left, though, the silver left, actually. It's slowly going. Um, OK, Nicola, I've got a couple of uh, team members here with me. I've got Andy. Who's Hi, Nicola. Say? Hi, Andy. How are you? And also Safi. Hello, Hi. Safi. I'm sure that, that you're doing a great job, though, and uh, as you said to him, speak for himself with the misfits. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, He's I, not I, speaking for all of us, for sure. <laughs> I, I'm certainly one of them. Um, <laughs> the reason why, if you've not heard, heard us before, the reason why Nicola's with us is to talk about a disease called sclerodoma. And it probably took me two years to learn how to say that. <laughs> You're getting there, John. <laughs> so, Claro. So can I, can, I, can I suggest, Nicola, <laughs> that you start by just giving us sure. a brief uh, example of what it is? OK. Well, last week on the 28th of February, so a week ago today, um, it was Rare Disease Day. And Rare Disease Day is designated the last day in February... So, obviously, on a leap year, it'll be the 29th of February. Um, so, so that's why uh, I was grateful to, to come on today to talk about rare disease um, and also it's Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month. Now, scleroderma is a rare disease, and it's actually, um, it's, it's, its biological name is systemic sclerosis. So that's like multiple sclerosis, but in my experience, systemic sclerosis is like multiple sclerosis with bells on. Um, but at the Royal Free, um, the, the U UK's leading scleroderma specialist unit, which is where I have attended since 1998, and I was diagnosed in 1997, and then my diagnosing doctor gave me a 15-month prognosis. Anyway, after a year of lots of immunosuppressants and chemotherapy, I went down to the Royal Free, because in those days I was living in Nottingham, um, li living a life, living the dream, John. Um, and uh, within 12 months of me being diagnosed, I was in quite a bad way. So in 1998, um, I literally dragged my body down to the scleroderma unit, which was headed up at that time by Professor Dame Black, as she is now. Um, and literally within a couple of seconds of being in her company, I knew that she wanted to help me to get better. Um, so it wasn't easy, John. Um, it took uh, at least five years of chemotherapy and immunosuppressants to get me stable. But ultimately, I'm very lucky to be here to tell the story, albeit that my day-to-day it is literally a, um, a full-time job managing the symptoms. So can you just explain, I know what the symptoms are, but just for the people that don't know, Sure. can you just explain, you know, what happens? Okay, well, scleroderma is a chronic degenerative autoimmune rare disease, and it affects the vascular, the connective tissue, and the musculoskeletal symptoms. So thickening of the skin is a typical symptom, and um, Professor Chris Denson is, is now leading, well, he's a world-leading expert in systemic sclerosis, scleroderma, and Raynaud's, because most scleroderma patients will have Raynaud's, which Raynaud's is when the, uh, your blood vessels um, contract too much, so thereby stopping blood flow. And um, it's usually the extremities, but most body parts can be affected. So fingers, toes, nose, ears, tongue, um, literally will, will change colour, so they'll go blue and white. And then when the circulation is restored, it's extremely painful. Um, and in actual fact, the Raynaud's aspect of, the, of my scleroderma um, literally keeps me housebound um, because there's, there's no cure for scleroderma and there's no cure for Raynaud's. So the only way of treating this is by disease-modifying drugs and also um, symptoms um, treatment suppression. So from my point of view, because I've been doing this now for 25 years, and as I say, John, I'm so blessed and so grateful to still be here to tell the story because um, a lot of my um, peers, in fact, only recently, um, the other day, um, a fellow... Um, patient from America who uh, she, she um, headed up yoga for scleroderma. Um, sadly, she passed away. 
so it's a really, really difficult um, diagnosis, A, to get the diagnosis, but B, to get treatments that are going to have some sort of effect on basically what, you slow, what you're doing is slowing the progression of the disease. So that's why I really am passionate, John, about finding, well, in, um, fundraising for um, research. Now, physically, I've got a tin man body. So just to, just to qualify that, uh, Nicola, when you get, when you, I know the answer to this, but a lot of people won't. When you get up in the morning, huh. you have a re regime that you have to go to, don't you? I do, John, and this, this works for me. It might not work for other patients. Um, and that's the other um, aspect of it. with being a rare disease it's so difficult to, to get treatments because of course the patients are rare so, and no two scleroderma patients will present with the same set of symptoms so my start to the day is um, sleeping is a rare luxury with, with, um, with, in my experience especially as the years have gone on um, because you're just constantly exhausted and fatigue is a continual symptom um, so my start of the day will, will, will usually involves with um, having to get in the bath um, to warm myself or to, to warm the circulation, to warm the joints. And then um, I have a, a base in liquid paraffin to give some sort of uh, emollient to my skin. Because when I first arrived at the Royal Free Hospital in 1998, my skin was so tight that I couldn't stretch my arms out or even my legs. Um, and it's, it's, if, if I can use this description, um, it's almost like a sausage that has got too big for, for, for its skin. And it's extremely painful. And the, the skin is itchy as well. Um, so that's a constant uh, irritant. Um, but the, the, the worst part of scleroderma is that it doesn't just affect the skin. It can affect other body organs. And so at the moment, the highest um, incidence of mortality is actually when um, patients um, have got interstitial lung disease. So what that means is that the scleroderma is causing thickening of the lungs and so therefore impeding um, breathing. And those patients have to carry oxygen cylinders around with them um, if, if, if they're lucky. So it's a really, you know, quite a, a grim, serious disease, John, and that, uh, you know, early diagnosis is so crucial, and that's why I do the awareness that I do, because I know that I was lucky to get down to the Royal Free within 12 months of my initial diagnosis. And as I just said earlier, it wasn't a walk in the park. Those next few years were hard. I was backwards and forwards on different drips. I was on the worst chemotherapy um, treatments in a ward that was um, with other people that were double my age um, and I'm on the, the, the harshest treatment um, but ultimately you, you know I got through it grateful and then on the 1st of March 2004 I qualified as a self-employed practicing barrister so in Nottingham Crown Court wearing my wig and gown and that's the day that I said to Professor Denton that I wasn't going to take any more chemotherapy because the chemotherapy, yes, it helps suppress the symptoms, and I'm now able to, you know, tell the story. But ultimately, um, the side effects are horrific. So my gastrointestinal system has been severely compromised um, with the scleroderma, as well as all the drugs that I've had over the years. So I'm pretty much now on a, a very strict diet. Um, I do juice. In 2012, I started juicing which um, to, to help get nutrients into my body. And so that's certainly um, assisted me. But of course, with the scleroderma, your hands. So my initial symptoms were the thickening of the skin. Um, my hands um, became, I, I couldn't uh, undo a top of, um, a, a, say, a jam jar or milk bottle. or uh, um, And that's still the case now, John. Um, and the fingers were very puffy. Um, and what happens over the course of the years, although luckily, because I was, did my exercises, I haven't got the, the usual typical curl, claw-like hands that most scleroderma patients you, you, you'll see, um, although my fingers are, are bent um, and not really fit for purpose. Nicola, but, can I just ask, sorry, it's Andy here, so just, sure. just, can I just ask you, um, is it something that this is, is, is a genetic 
disease or is it something that's developed great over time? Question. Did you have it when you were young, born with it? Were great you... question. No, I was 24 when I was diagnosed in 1997 and literally the um, symptoms uh, appeared practically over the course of uh, a few weeks. Um, I've been pretty much a relatively healthy adult individual, as I said before, li- living the dream in Nottingham. I was working in the pharmaceutical company. I was also doing my law studies. And um, Was boom. it something that triggered it? Well, that, that's, again, the million-dollar question at the moment so far. It's um, unknown cause. In relation to the genetic aspect, it's not thought that it's genetic, although, interestingly enough, 80% of rare diseases are thought to be genetic. Yes. Now, I am of the view that the science is yet to, cu- to, to catch up because my late mother, um, she passed from um, pancreas to, um, cancer of the pancreas, um, but she also had primary biliary cirrhosis. Now, these are both rare diseases in their own right as well. My late grandmother, she was very much um, troubled with arthritis. Uh, and so, personally, I think that, that there is a genetic link, but um, at the moment, that the science is um, still still to, uh, to prove that. Nicola, I have a question for you as well. Um, earlier on, you mentioned using yoga to help. I'm actually a yoga teacher. That's Are my job. You? So I'm just interested how you found using sort of well, complementary therapies or extra sure. things to help with your symptoms. Personally, yoga is a no-go for me, but for my late friend, Laurie, who was over in the states it really helped her um, for me doing any form of physical exercise i mean even getting in the bath some days i can't do it's just too much and that's with the swollen joints and the muscles it's, it's connective tissue that's affected and basically my body has produced too much collagen so that's why all the immunosuppression and the chemotherapy is given is to try and um, stop that uh, the you know your body um having it tripping out basically on, on itself yeah it sounds very difficult especially if you're restricted from using sort of other exercise and things to help you um well I've, I've, i know difficult. some patients that, that that they're able to and again this is when it, it becomes a, a you, you know interesting because no two patients present with the same set of symptoms so yeah. i see some of my patients uh, fellow patients that uh, you know that they're a lot more active than i um, and this is why I do my awareness of, of this nature, because I physically am unable to, to walk very far, so I can't run marathons, I can't do sponsored walks, and as I was saying earlier about the uh, disability in, um, in, in, the hand, in my hands, I can't do knitting anymore, I can't do baking. Is there a website or what people, who people can go to, to if they wish to donate or, or, or help out? Um, yeah, sure. Nicola, um, if you want uh, to give that out to, yeah, to, to us. I've actually got my own personal blog, if anyone wants to find some more information, which is blog.raynodes.com scleroderma.co.uk I'm sure John will put the link up in, in, it's, in, it's already there actually Nicola it's already on our website oh, so, fantastic. Um, but really, don't, if anyone would like to donate there. to research I do have a Just Giving page um, which is Scleroderma Unit Royal Free but also there's a special box on the Royal Free Charity website so if you click on the donate and then um, scroll down a little bit and uh, tick on a box that says that you would like to donate to um, a fund other than what the, the charity are, are designating at that time. And then it will give a drop-down box, and then you can see that there, there are other rare diseases that are um, research uh, funds as well. So you can click down there, and you'll see scleroderma and Raynaud's research. Excellent. Nicola, I know, I know for a fact that you spend a lot of time, um, shall we say, confined to barracks. <laughs> Uh, and I know also that you you occasionally take the trip down to uh, the Royal Free in Hampstead. That's three years it's, uh, coming, up, coming up that I haven't been down to um, since I've been last down to the Royal Free. Okay, but you, you're com- familiar with the new building, aren't you? I am, the Pears building. Yeah. I'm so excited about this, John. Because, you know, for somebody like me that's living with this uh, (laughs) quite a bleak reality, if I can put it like that, then um, the the Pears building has just given so much hope. 
And in actual fact, um, the, the new clinical research facility, in fact, last year on Rare Disease Day, the National Institute of Health Research awarded £4.9 million to the Royal Free Clinical Research Facility. Um, and it's one of 28 facilities across England um, which the NIHR are supporting for rare disease research. And so far, £161 million has been invested in these 28 facilities. So, the, you know, th this really is uh, quite exciting. And also on a personal level, <coughs> I'm a patient voice on the Clinical Research Facility Management Board. So that's been really exciting from the start to see this project, so, you, you know, from when it first started in its infancy to wh where we're at at the moment of um, how, how the, the, the unit is growing and developing and ultimately becoming a, you know, a global center. So, so, how, so how do you communicate with them, via Zoom or That's some, right. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously the pandemic, you, you, you know, um, extremely distressing for, for, for us all. But the, the w one silver lining that for me was the pandemic um, came with was that everything became um, accessible electronically. And so for somebody like me that literally, you know, just to even have a bath is extremely uh, physically exerting, um, to be able to now attend these meetings and um, also excited that I was, I'm able to sit around the, uh, the DHSC, so that's the Department of Health and Social Care, NHS England, Rare Disease UK, um, round the table. Um, I'm in those forums and those groups, um, whereas before... I would have been invited, but physically I wouldn't have been able to attend. Understood, yeah. I think you're doing a fantastic job, actually, for scleroderma and making people aware of it. Certainly, uh, the, the first time I spoke to you, I was totally unaware. Um, needed to say since then, I've become aware of what's, what it is. The Pears building, I haven't actually... The last time I was at uh, Hampstead, I didn't actually get in there, but I've heard it's fabulous. Yes. Well, th you can go on the, the website, John, and have a virtual tour, and um, it, it's, uh, y y you know, it's 21st century medicine. But, uh, and, and thank you for your kind words, but I have to say, I'm eternally grateful to Professor Denton. He's an amazing man, isn't he? Absolutely. Well, he's extraordinary, y you know, uh, superhuman, um, uh, because without... Um, his expertise and also, as I said to you on the 1st of March 2004, when I said, right, I can't take any more of this chemotherapy, you know, he didn't dictate to me, he didn't argue with me, he, he, he's the whole way through, he, uh, uh, he's been my co-pilot while I've been, you know, going, going through this journey, um, and it, the, the whole team there are just exceptional um, but Professor Denton, what, wow. So, th again, this is why I do the awareness, because, you, you know, what he's doing there and what he's been doing for over 25 years at that unit, uh, not just for me, but for the, the patients at the unit, it, it, you know, it, it's having a, 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 an immense effect for patients across the globe. Do you know, listening to your voice, we would, we would never know that, that, there's any, that you're suffering from a serious disease. It really, you always sound, uh, whenever I chat to you, uh, whether it be on the air or not on the air, we always have a bit of a joke and a laugh. Oh, well, thanks, John. And well, I, it's I, a good I, job it's radio, let's just say that. Well, that's one of the reasons, <laughs> that's one, one of the reasons why I'm still here, actually, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> if it was television, I got the sack ages ago. <laughs> Not at all, John. I'm hanging on because I'm, yet, I'm, I'm a bit older than Ken Bruce and he's gone. <laughs> oh, well, I've got a view on that, but I don't think we, we should um, <laughs> go down that avenue. Probably not. <laughs> Nicola, it's, it's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, John, and thanks for all you're doing there at the radio and great team. And if anyone would like to follow me, um, hashtag scleroderma free world and hashtag Raynaud's free world are my hashtags. So all of the awareness materials that I do will have that hashtag. And it's all, all they'll find it all on our Royal Free Radio yes. um, site. And also, uh, I put it on uh, Facebook as well. So Hey, John, go easy. <laughs> you see, technically, I'm, I'm almost there. You now, are. Now, we share, we share a favourite artist, don't we? Oh, well, that's right. And sad times recently, though. Hmm. And uh, that, that artist is uh, Leonard Skinner.
Are we uh, doing it then, John? Are we going to do it? Uh, and what's the track? What's your favourite track? Sweet Home Alabama. That's the one. Nicola, lovely to talk to you. Thanks, John. Stay well. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye for now. Bye.